Oh my god! Okay, let's talk about this after the bumper. Don't be cornering me! Hold up! Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Kim Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. It's an echoey... I don't know, stairwell? Yeah, it's a stairwell. We're just gonna do it here, man, because it's loud and people are celebrating and I don't want to take that from them, but this is 28, 24, 5, 5 TCU, files through 5 and 6, and Oklahoma needed to win on senior night, and they got the win, but again, with the cardiac crap, dude, I get that you want to say championship November, I get that you want to tell everybody that you haven't actually lost a game in the month of November in five years, and you continue to get to say that, but it ain't without taking some years off of the lives of everybody who calls your team their team. So let's back up, all right? Before I get to the part where Buki actually saved Jalen Hurts' life, but we'll get there, promise. So the game starts off just fine. It starts off well, we're all tearing up because Grant Calcaterra is out there for senior night because he announces Thursday night that he can no longer play football because he has to medically retire after having so many concussions on the advice of doctors and folks that know from the game. He's gonna go back to California, probably be a firefighter. You get to see Jalen Hurts go through senior night and his dad, like him, don't smile when they call his name. That tells you anything about what's going on in the Hurts family. Shout out to his mom and I think sister, sibling, who were having a good time out there, you know. Shout out to Lee Morris, who was having a great time out there. Looked very excited to be out there at senior night. My man, Kenneth Man was out there in the letter jacket. I appreciated that as well. And Mark, my man, Marquise Overton. Jinx Oklahoma, stand up, dog. I seen you, I seen you, I seen you. Shout out to Nevin Gallimore out there, you know what I mean? So, you see all of that. And then we have all the speculation about what C.D. Lamb is going to do or not do. And he did not go through senior night ceremonies. However, we all expect him to jump into the NFL draft. I have it on great advice from folks that know from the NFL that he can go tomorrow and he'd be just fine. And I had this graphic set up because my man was sitting on 983 yards receiving and I was going to tweet this graphic out when he got to 1,000. He's sitting on 999 because that's basically how this game went. So we get to the start of the game and Oklahoma drives the length of the field. Jalen Hurts goes across the line. I get to tweet this graphic where he goes for 3,000 yards passing and 1,000 yards rushing, becoming just the third player to ever accomplish that feat in the first 11 games of the season. The others are Johnny Manziel in 2012. We know all about that season. And then, then 2016, Lamar Jackson, right? Both of those guys won the Heisman Trophy. And while Jalen Hurts is probably going to end up breaking Jack Milgram's record for rushing yards in a season by a quarterback sitting at 1289, Jalen Hurts is, I think, just a little, right around 1100, right, after tonight. It went off the rails real quick because you saw Alec Rich's defense get four punts out of TCU and a true freshman quarterback. Cool, right? Jalen Rager is your dude. Tay Barber can make it happen. Say woo woo. A lot of Lua, he can play too. Darius Anderson can play, but you ought to have this one uncontrolled, right? And that's what it looked like because they're 21 2 0 with about 10 and change left to play in the second quarter. And then, and then it just goes off the rails. And how does it go off the rails? Max Duggan runs a speed option to his left. It goes for 62 yards in which Pat Fields has to run him down at the OU six yard line and they punch it in a couple plays later. And then on the next series, Jay Hazelwood coughs up the ball and they score on that. So it's 21-10. Just as, by the way, Gary Patterson had gone away from his 4-2-5 to a three-man front because he has figured out what a lot of people are figuring out, which is, hey, Jalen can't see it. If you drop back eight, where you send four, but you send one from an unorthodox position, like say nickel, unorthodox, that's the joke. Nickel's an orthodox position. But if you send one late, he ain't gonna be able to see it. And in this game in which Lincoln Riley had made a concerted effort to run the football, Kennedy Brooks got all kinds of work. 25 carries for nearly 150 yards. And Jalen Hurts is running the ball. Matter of fact, Jalen Hurts had just like 173 yards pass. They were not about to try to put this ball in the air. And yet, when they did, it ain't always going to play, dog. It ain't always going to play. I get the CD Lamb had a touchdown pass, and it was a nice back shoulder throw, but nah, man. Because I made the joke that, like, in the fourth quarter, when Oklahoma goes up 28 to 17 after TCU had closed this from 21 to 10 to a one score game, 
I'm like, you know, I understand that Oklahoma's going to run the football, but I would really like to tweet this graphic because I wanted to see CeeDee Lamb get to 1,000 yards. He's really going to be sitting on 999 when they go to play Oklahoma State. Still one next week. But then it went off the rail because it looks like Oklahoma's about to go up and put this game out of reach for TCU. They're up 28-17. You get a score. Game's over. No. Lincoln calls the slant. Jalen throws that slant or tries to throw that slant to CeeDee Lamb, and it gets picked off. And my man took that 98 yards the other direction, which was indicative of the night that Jalen Hurts had had because he put the ball on the ground. And you had turnover on downs from the OU offense where they just couldn't pick up the first down on fourth and short. And you're seeing Jalen Hurts actually slip and fall. And that's a turnover on downs. And it's not even that TCU's defense is, we all know they're undersized. They're not very big, but they're fast and they tackle. And they did a lot of that. They were able to fly the football, put people on the ground. And Jalen Hurts, Picked senior night to play his worst football of the entire season after what I thought was not a great game, at least a great first half from him against Baylor. And he wanted to put all this behind him. And then, with three and change left to play, Texas Christian has the ball. And they're down 28 24. And all I got to do is go down and score. And it's the, out of the gate, Sonny Company, he calls up a play, says, I'm going to go deep to Jalen Rager. Parnell Motley did what he's been doing all night, pick up a pass and grids call. So TCU's got the ball at their own 40, or excuse me, at the OU 40. And all of a sudden, Max Duggan feels like he should do some stuff, right? Rather than run the ball, run the speed option, no. He tries to force this, and then of all people, as I've been told by my man Charles Thompson and by my homeboy Byron, Buki, Buki comes up with the interception to save Jalen Hurts' is behind to save the behind of Alex Grinch, to save the behind of Lincoln Riley, because this is on a night in which Oregon went ahead and did us all a favor and lost to Arizona State. So that's one less team for Oklahoma to worry about, and now you got to hope that Oregon beats Utah in the Pac-12 championship to knock them out, but you still need Georgia to beat LSU, or no, excuse me, you don't need LSU to beat Georgia, and that is the point is, Oklahoma needs to continue to do what Oklahoma's been doing, and now with Oh, Bedlam all the way with just Chuba Hubbard and parts because there's no Tyler Wallace and no, no Spencer Sanders in this game. You feel like you should win that game in Stillwater. But this game was really getting on everybody's nerves. And I can understand why. Carbon heart attacks about this. We're stressing out about this because they just couldn't put it away. You were at a 21 point advantage and you let it go. Just like Iowa State two weeks ago. You had an advantage, 21 points, you let it go. Team needs to learn to finish. I don't know what Lincoln is doing. I don't know what they're coaching. I don't know what exactly you need to do to get through to them. I feel probably as much about this win as you feel. It feels like we escaped from our own building, which is not a thing that's supposed to happen. All right, we'll talk more about it. Feels good.